we're going to have a bit of a chat about Wonder Women in STEM. So we've got uh, Siobhan, who's an associate from our Sydney office. Um, and we've got Kimberly, um, who's an applied science engineer from our Adelaide office. Um, and Esha, who's also from our Adelaide office and is an electrical engineer. So we'll do a little bit of a presentation for you guys, um, hear from their stories, their journeys, um, and then we'll have a bit of a discussion. So as I've mentioned in the other sessions, feel free to click on your cameras. We'd love to see your faces. Um, you can use the chat for your questions. Um, otherwise we'll do a bit of a Q and A uh, discussion piece at the end. So over to you Siobhan. Okay, hang on just a minute. What are we up to? I'm just, um, <clears throat> do I have access to your screen or do I have to share my screen? Oh, there we go. All right, you're gonna flick for me. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone. Um, so my name is Siobhan Tapia-Smith. I'm an Associate Structural Engineer with Oricon. Um, I'm also one of the leaders within Oricon and I am a mother, as you can see there, my very adorable children. So um, can we flip to the next screen? Who's got control? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, Siobhan, I've got control. I think there's a little bit of a lag. So just <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, no worries. That's all right. I can work with that. Cool. So, um, look, I've been an engineer for, oh, I guess it's probably about 16 years now since I, since I graduated. Um, I studied engineering at UTS in a combined degree with arts, majoring in international studies, um, and I studied German as part of that, so languages and international studies. Um, when I graduated, I, I went straight into the workforce. I was, I was really lucky, got a, a nice little job for myself working as a structural engineer and really um, relished and, and took on every challenge that, that came across my plate. So whenever a, a project came across that looked a bit challenging, I, I stuck my hand up and jumped into the fray and it's really helped me to develop my skills technically as I've gone through. And um, I think it's, it's important to, to realise that you can't, you can't do everything when you start. You have to really build. You start with your base, what you've learned at university, and, and you build on that and build more and more. Uh, so technically, I jumped on a whole lot of projects. I started on people's home renovations, and I've gradually progressed to things like you can see on the screen now on this slide. So I've worked on uh, the entertainment centre um, in Darling Harbour. So I'm in Sydney and based in Sydney for, for um, people who might not be. Uh, so you can see down the bottom, bottom left there, there's a, a photo under construction of, of um, some of my design work. So I led that package. Uh, so that's the world's longest spanning exhibition hall floor, which is Pretty exciting claim to fame for me. Um, I do a lot of work out at Sydney Airport and I've worked on a lot of data centres now um, with Oricon. So, and we do a lot of schools. Um, and for those of you familiar with Oricon, you might also have seen we do stadiums. So we've been involved in Western Sydney Stadium, uh, the SFS. We're doing Western Sydney Airport and, and a lot of other big projects like that within our structural team. So if I can just flip to the next, thank you. Um, as I've progressed, I've now moved into uh, more senior ranks within engineering and I'm picking up more and more leadership roles. So I've been made an owner of, of Oricon, which is akin to, to fellowship um, and uh, if you were in a legal firm, um, and then I, I also represent a leadership team for what we call the built environment. So it's about 150 different engineering and modeling staff who work on, on buildings. Um, <clears throat> so they're mechanical, electrical, structural. There's a real um, cross section of engineers. I also represent a leadership team for the structural engineering team. So within that, there's, there's approximately 40 engineers in our team. I work as a line manager. So I have six, six staff members that I'm, I work with to help guide them through their careers. We set their goals together every year. We, um, we address their performance in, in 
whether it's positive or negative, we look at how to keep a balance in their life. And really I try and support them, support them through that. A little bit different to being a mentor. I'm probably more of a sponsor for, for those people. Um, I also have taken on the hat of champion of the gender pillar within our New South Wales um, uh, uh, Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Uh, and I chair the, the Health and Safety Committee and I'm on multiple client leadership teams. So working with clients within our, within our Oricon space to, to understand what our clients need and, and try and um, develop deeper relationships with them. So we just flick on. So I guess it's really important to understand what Oricon can offer in terms of gender equality and, and generally what it's like to be at Oricon for, for, for both genders or for all genders. Um, there's certain things that are just common regardless of who you are or what level you sit at. Um, they, these things will apply to you. So we are a WGEA employer of choice. So this is really, really an important one. There are only 119 companies in Australia that have this ranking and we are one of them. And those companies are not just engineering firms, they'll be banks, they'll be all sorts of, all sorts of companies. So it's a select few that can achieve this and it really goes to show um, just how serious gender equality is for, for our people and, um, and just how seriously we take that. Some of the other great initiatives that we've got are pay parity and, and yes flex. So pay parity is um, we, we all fit into certain grades according to our ability, our experience. Um, and so within those grades, we're regularly reviewing and making sure that there's no, um, there's no disadvantages to anybody in, within that band so that women are not being underpaid in comparison to the uh, males in the equivalent position. Yes Flex. Yes Flex is a really terrific um, initiative by, that Oricon has to accommodate and really enable it, all of our staff to, to live their best lives. So we all understand that work is a big part of what our lives are, but there's more to everybody than I am an engineer. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I'm also a mother, I have obligations to a family. So we have a whole variety of people. Some people are sportsmen, we've got some ex-Olympians within our company. We have people that might have creative, creative businesses on the side, you know, maybe making face masks, all sorts of things. So we give an allowance for those people through communicating with, with their teams to alter their working weeks. So that might mean like me, you do a four day week. Um, it might mean like some of my colleagues, um, they like to do drop off their children in the morning. So some of those, my male colleagues might start work at 10 o'clock and enables them to do their, their drop offs, get into work and do their day. And we can all work with that quite easily and adjust our meeting schedules to make sure that, that our colleagues can accommodate life with work. Um, some of the other great initiatives we've got are, are formal mentoring. So uh, that's quite clear what that is, I think. Um, and that happens across all different levels. So, so not only are junior people being mentored, but the senior people can also seek mentoring across the company. Um, and it doesn't have to be people with, with whom you work with immediately in, in your team. It, it really, we're such a big company with approximately 5,000 people with there's a lot of choice in terms of who you partner up with for mentoring and, and what reasons you might want to, to partner with them. And we have male champions of change. So our CEO, Bill Cox, he is one of the male champions of change and we have several others within the company that, um, that actively participate in this sphere. And so that's really making sure that we're taking charge of a business and it's its responsibilities to, to influence how women can interact in, in a world that's maybe traditionally male dominated. Um, and then a really new initiative, but super exciting one that we're, that we're kicking off is called Talking Talent. So that's parenting support. So um, 
and this applies, of course, to, to anyone who's looking at potentially having children or who have children and are looking to, to take more leave. Um, and it's, it's ma male and females. And it's also uh, an educational piece for their line managers who will be working with them to help let them take time off and reintegrate into work once they've had time off. We've also got then things that are quite specific to, to different experience levels within, within our business. So emerging professionals who would, would encompass people like um, the, the graduates that, that come and join us through to sort of a mid-level of engineering, um, which would might equate to something like five or six years of experience. These people within our business are, are all um, exposed to opportunities to do reverse mentoring. So that is particularly for, for poten high potential um, emerging professional females to mentor males in the business who sit in, in higher levels, maybe executive levels, um, so, that they, so that there's a, a cross-pollination between what really matters to our emerging professional women and do, are there any behavioural changes or improvements that could be made in a higher level in the business um, amongst those, um, the, the men that probably haven't, haven't had much interaction with younger women all that often in terms of a, um, a social aspect or, um, or indeed through work. We've got a big commitment to diversity in, in our recruitment. And last year, I'm really pleased to say we had 62% of our graduates were female, which is enormous. Um, so we really focus on the quality of, 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 of talent that we can bring into the office. So these are our unfair share of the market, really. So we've got some really talented young women that have joined us. Um, we really endeavour to make it a safe workplace through training for um, the people that are leading line managers and, and the like that are leading the business um, so that they can set the standard for a safe workplace for our EPs. There's a lot of specialist technical and soft skills training. Um, Foundations of Leadership, for example, is, is, um, is a leadership training course for, for EPs, for the kind of uh, EPs that are hitting their five, six years uh, of experience and naturally we've got lots of continuing education um, we do this in a formal sense and also in through lessons learned and design critiques um, and then there's limelight there as a support as well for um, for all of our emerging professionals then with within the experienced professional space so someone like myself would be exposed to the opportunities to to join our ascend leadership training so that's for high potential females within our business um, and they get the experience of working with an external trainer and learning how to how to really harness their strengths and to be a genuine leader. We also have the Design Academy which is is open regardless of, of your gender um, for those who see who see technical a technical career path is important to them. Um, those who really identify strongly with being highly technical and really want to share that and, and strengthen ways to, to deliver technically. Um, then we've got a commitment to equality in ownership and executive positions. So as I said, I, I'm a member of, of our ownership cohort and, and we have executive positions beyond that that we're also um, striving to, to make an inroads in terms of really getting more of an equality in the numbers that are sitting there. We do training for line managers, which is called Words at Works, to make sure that we understand how our words can affect different people, making sure that it's always inclusive and respectful of the diversity of our teams. And we do um, inclusive leadership training, um, again, for diversity and also for our LGBTI plus community so that we're sensitive to their needs and what's um, how to be respectful of of it, keeping them in, involved and included in, in life at Oricon. So um, that's, I think there's one more. Thanks, Siobhan. So yeah, well, thank you. Um, that's a bit of an overview of female life in Oricon and being a, uh, and being a leader within, within that space.
Thank you. It's um, 